looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd to get a 10 percent discount on orders over ten dollars and starting from now you also get entered into the gills of ravnica booster box giveaway which runs until october 5th hello and welcome to another episode of wacky wednesday a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern and this week we're taking one last look at panharmonicon in standard a four mana artifact that says if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time so in short all of the enters battlefield abilities on our creatures will happen twice so most of the creatures in this deck will have sweet enter battlefield abilities that benefit from panharmonicon being in play so let's take a look at our entire deck, starting out with our two drops where we have some mana acceleration. We've got four copies of Naga Vitalist, which taps at one mana of any type that a land we control could produce. So if we don't have a blue or white producing land, then the Vitalist can't tap for that color of mana. But since we have so many dual lands, that should not be an issue. We also have four copies of Servant of the Conduit as another mana creature that gains two energy when she enters the battlefield and we can spend that energy to make one mana of any color. So having the Panharmonicon will also net us more energy. Then we get to our 3-drops where we have some removal in the form of Fairgrounds Warden, 3 mana for a 1-3 creature that when it enters the battlefield we can exile target creature and opponent controls until the Fairgrounds Warden leaves the battlefield. So with Panharmonicon we can exile multiple creatures with the Fairgrounds Warden, which is pretty sweet. We also have 4 copies of Militia Bugler, which is also one of the build around cards in the deck. And as you'll notice, Militia Bugler can pretty much find any creature in our deck. So very synergistic and powerful card as a 3 mana 2-3 with Vigilance. And when the Bugler enters the battlefield, we can look at the top 4 cards of our library and then reveal a creature with power 2 or less from among them and put it into our hand. So it provides a lot of card advantage and card selection as well. Then we also have two copies of Champion of Wits as a nice card filtering engine, 3 mana for a 2-1, as that when it enters the battlefield we get to draw cards equal to its power, and if we do we get to discard two cards, and then it also has Eternalize for 7 mana, so if we get it back from the graveyard it will be a 4-4, essentially drawing us 4 cards, and then making us discard 2, so it also benefits greatly from Panharmonicon being in play. We also have four copies of Elvish Rejuvenator as another ramp card, three mana for a 1-1 Elf Druid. When it enters the battlefield, we can look at the top five cards of our library, and then we can put a land card from among those on the battlefield tapped. And then we get to our four drops, where we have our four copies of Panharmonicon. And then we also have two copies of Bishop of Binding, which is very similar to Fairgrounds Warden. So when it enters the battlefield, we can exile an opposing creature. And it's only a 1-1 as opposed to a 1-3, but it does have a pretty sweet ability in that when the Bishop of Binding attacks, target Vampire gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the power of the exiled card. So of course the only Vampire in our deck being Bishop of Binding itself, meaning that if the Bishop attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the power of the exiled card. So it could attack for quite a bit, especially Especially if we have Panharmonicon in play, since if we can exile multiple creatures with Bishop of Binding, then it will get plus X plus X, where X is equal to the combined power of all the exiled creatures. So if we exile, let's say, Goblin Chain Warlord and a Rekindling Phoenix, then the Bishop of Binding will get plus 7 plus 7 when it attacks, which is pretty powerful. Then we get to our 5 drops, where we have 3 copies of Angel of Invention, 5 mana for a 2-1 that has Flying, Vigilance and Lifelink, and also Fabricate 2. So when it enters the battlefield, we can choose between putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Angel, or making 2 1-1 one, one servo tokens. And then other creatures we control also get plus 1 plus 1. So a very powerful card that we can still find with our Militia Bugler, and rewards us for playing a lot of creatures. Then we also have the full four copies of Cloud Blazer, which is one of the sweeter cards in the deck. Five mana for a 2-2 creature with flying, and when Cloud Blazer enters the battlefield, we get to gain two life and draw two cards, so that gets even better with a Panharmonicon in play. And then last but not least, we have two copies of Tishana, Voice of Thunder, seven mana for a star star, where Tishana's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in hand. So we do want to make sure not to cast Tishana with an empty hand, otherwise she will die right away. And then Tishana says we have no maximum hand size, and when Tishana enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card for each creature we control, including Tishana herself. So that's a very powerful enters battlefield ability in this deck, where we have so many creatures. And I should point out the interaction between Tishana and Militia Bugler. So if we play Militia Bugler and have two or fewer cards in hand, then we can actually reveal Tishana with the Bugler's ability and put it into our hand. If we have more than two cards in hand, then we won't be able to get Tishana with the Bugler's ability. Then taking a look at our mana base, we've got a total of eight cycling lands, we've got the four copies of Irrigated Farmland, and four copies of Scatter Groves, which synergize very nicely with the check lands, three copies of Hinterland Harbor, 
three copies of Glacial Fortress and then the full four Sun Petal Grove, since we are mainly a green-white deck, just splashing blue. Then we also have three basic forests, three basic plains, and a single basic island. Then going over the sideboard, we've got two copies of Seal Away against the more aggressive creature decks, full four copies of Negate against control decks, two more copies of Fairgrounds Warden for when we need more removal, two Reclamation Sages against artifacts and enchantments, as well as one Manglehorn, specifically for artifacts, and then two copies of Sunscorched Champion, which can also gain us some life back against the more aggressive burn decks, and two copies of Ixalan's Binding as another versatile removal spell. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand's not great, but we can always cycle one of the Scattered Groves. I think we'll keep, and I will play the first one. Alright, let's play Servants. And we are a pretty mana-intensive deck, so I think playing the first Scatter Groves is reasonable, but uh, we might regret it if we draw a couple more lands here. Opponent on blue-black and Bugler's a good pickup. So uh, let's run them out there. Hope to find more Buglers and find a Cloud Blazer instead. Not bad. Attack for two. So her hand is shaping up nicely. Opponent on Grixis. And Captain Lannery Storm. Gets in there. Yeah, I think I'm okay with the trade. So her opponent maybe on a pirate stack. Alright, let's uh, run out Cloud Blazer here. Get ahead on cards before we worry about closing out the game with uh, Angel. Angel also better once you have kind of a an established board presence. Since then the plus one bonus to all our creatures adds up to deal quite a bit more damage. And Nicol Bolas will discard, I think a Scatter Groves. Could make a 4-3 Angel. Could cycle to dig for something like a Panharmonican. I think I'm okay cycling. And another Cloud Blazer instead is not bad. So for now we can just run out some more servants. Nicol Bola stays back, and Bishop of Binding the draw could be exciting, but with her opponent keeping up for mana, it's a little sketchy to get rid of Nicol Bola, since then if they kill the Bishop they would have their blocker back and make us discard another card. So that doesn't seem worth it to me. So I think we'll just Cloud Blazer again. And we can pay for a Supreme Will. Could run out a land first, but if they make us discard again, I think we want to discard a land, so I think this is okay. Just going to be an Essence Scatter instead. Look at this Purzel, wow. <laughs> Maximum punish now for not playing out the land. Alright, fair enough. I think we still keep the land in hand, and then just pass a turn. Could get in for 6 at the cost of a Cloud Blazer or Servant. Is that worth it? Could be. Alright, fine. If they also have a Fatal Push, then this attack looks a lot worse. Alright, so opponent down to 12. And another Captain Lannery. Into Kainzel Freebooter, which is gonna miss. So our opponent on Grixis, Pirates with Nicol Bolas. I'm going a little bit off theme to pick up a powerful card. Alright, so Angel of Invention is looking good here. And just try to go wide, even though the Angel could trade for Nicol Bolas. So we'll get rid of Captain Lannery, I think. Opponent down to 6, and now I think I'll play out the planes, since we probably want to cycle the scatter groves. So our opponent has 6 mana, and the Bishop of Binding can potentially get rid of a blocker. And our opponent scoops it up, alright, so got game 1 against Grixis Pirates. How do we approach this matchup? 
Seems like an Exxon's Binding could be a potential improvement over Bishop of Binding. Opponent might take out their Freebooters. And the Binding is a more reliable answer. I uh, don't think we need to change much. Seal away could be okay, but might not be necessary. And I think we'll still keep two Fairgrounds Wardens. Alright, we'll try this. And this hand could potentially get there if we find a second land. Since we have a Vitalist and Servant. It's a little sketchy, but I think we can keep... We've got two draw steps to find a land, preferably an untapped one. And then this hand is quite good. Even if we miss on a land, it's not game over right away. Alright, found it. Let's run out the Vitalists. Get skilled by Lightning Strike. And another Vitalist, I guess. Might uh, meet the same fate. This one survives. And we get to untap and play Paramonican. If they had a Braid, I imagine they would have killed the Vitalist. And now we start going off. Especially if we find another land. Alright. Let's just go maximum pressure. Opponent could have brought in the Pirate Clasm effect. So maybe we only make one pair of servos and then put the plus one counters with the other one. This way we hedge a little bit in case of the deal two damage to non-pirates. Alright, they had a Lightning Strike anyway. And Magma Spray for the Vitalist, that's okay. So we could have potentially had more servos. This one comes into play tapped, so we'll just be playing a bugler here. And misses, reveals two panharmonicans. What are the odds? And our opponent's just gonna pack it in. Alright, so an unfortunate uh, mana situation on the opponent's side, and we managed to beat the Grixis Pirates onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems totally fine. Turn 3, Panharmonican. Turn 4, Cloudblazer, if all goes well. And they turn 1, Lanor Elves. So could be in trouble if they have a turn 2, Steel Leaf Champion here. Probably doesn't matter too much which tap land we lead with. Alright, opponent on the red-green. Could include some uh, Sarkons and Ceilings instead. Drover of the Mighty, so opponent on a Dinosaur deck. Let's run out Vitalists. So how do we feel about our Dinosaurs matchup? Should be winnable. Some of the bigger Dinosaurs could apply a lot of early pressure. And there we see Sarkons and Ceiling. Now that's a scary card that we don't have any main deck answers for. So we'll have to gain quite a bit of life with our uh, Cloud Blazers here. Double Panharmonican is pretty spicy too, though. And our opponent with a Ripjaw Raptor takes out the Vitalist. So we're forced to play another Panharmonican here. I mean, we could also play a Vitalist or a Champion of Wits, but come on. Go big or go home. So we're taking quite a bit of damage here. Opponent could even play a Galta and go 7 to the face. Instead, it's going to be a commune with dinosaurs. So this is a matchup where we probably want to bring in our Reclamation Sages, although they're kind of narrow. Ixon's Binding definitely is going to make the cut. Even their opponent probably has the Brontodon to destroy artifacts and enchantments. So we take 8 down to 12. And hoping for an untapped land here. Alright, perfect. Let's draw some cards. Bishop of Binding, definitely gonna do some work in this game. Even have to discard to hand size, so... My guess is we probably don't need the Scatter Groves. And then discarding Champion of Wits can also be a nice value play. I think I'm down. Alright, so next turn we'll have 6 mana, so we could go Bugler plus Fairgrounds Warden, get rid of 3 creatures. And Register Alpha can shoot down a Cloud Blazer. Alright, so we're taking a beating here. So our hope is that they don't have another 4 power creature to get rid of the Fairgrounds Warden. So it's kind of sketchy, so if we 
exile the Regisaur, then if our opponent finds an answer for the Warden, we would give them an extra token, but by leaving it in play, all their dinosaurs have haste, which is uh, pretty scary too. Could also go after the mana creatures, so they are unable to cast their big creatures. That's also a reasonable strategy, and then next turn, get rid of the Regisaur and the Ripjaw. It's a bit of a gamble, since if they go land Ripjaw, we could be dead. I suppose we have a Rejuvenator as a chum blocker. Alright, so I think our plan is... Play Rejuvenator, which will give us access to a ton of mana next turn. And then we can still play Fairgrounds Warden, cut them off the mana creatures, and the token. And then we can Chum Block with Rejuvenator on the Regisaur. And then next turn we can try to set up our Bishop of Binding to clean up whatever's left in play. At some point we can also drop Tishana. This play would also be weak against Land Galta from the opponent. Since then they get to clear our board, but it's not as bad against a spot removal spell killing the Fairgrounds Warden. So let's jump the Regisaur. Down to 7 we go, and we get to untap. Could also play Tishana, which is going to be a giant blocker. But then we would only be able to play a 3 mana spell, so we wouldn't be able to play the Bishop. Could be worth the risk. So we would go Lance, Bugler... Tishana, and then we get to draw 9 cards total with Tishana. Is that better than playing a Bishop of Binding here? Suppose we can play a Bugler first, see what we draw, since that's going to be part of both plans. And finds another Fairgrounds Warden, alright. It's pretty decent. And this one finds another Bugler. And this one finds a, another Bishop of Binding, I think, over more Buglers. So now we can play Bugler plus Bishop of Binding still. Seems reasonable. Guess we can attack for one first. So let's try the Bishop here, I think. And then play another Militia Bugler. Extra blockers in case they do answer the Bishop. And this one finds Angel of Invention. Servants. And the last one finds another Angel of Invention. Alright, that was a decent turn. And I have to discard to hand size. Guess we get rid of a Naga Vitalist. And our opponent did not do anything end of turn there, so that's good. And this Bishop of Binding is threatening to attack for quite a bit. Can even go double Angel of Invention potentially. And Steel Leaf Champion can kill the Bishop. Instead, they decide to kill the Fairgrounds Warden instead. Um, let's see, how much mana are we working with? Can we kill our opponent? So, Bishop gets plus 8 here. Power, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So not quite, but we're definitely just going to play a Fairgrounds Warden and an Angel here, I think. Get rid of all their blockers. Tishana's tempting too, but this hits for more. And I think we just want to make a giant Angel so we can gain more life. Interesting, the Bishop of Binding only got plus 4 there. I thought it would get the bonus from both creatures. Might be wrong. Let's play land, say go, and then cycle the farmland end of turn. Probably should have uh, kept up green mana so we could have played a Servant there. But I don't think it's going to make a difference. Alright, so we got game 1 against the red-green Dinos. So how do we adjust? Ixalan's Binding definitely coming in. And... My guess is more Fairgrounds Wardens are reasonable, as is Seal Away. So those are considerations. Bishop seemed pretty good that game, so I think we keep it. 
Could see cutting a few mana creatures. Champion of Wits might not be at its best here. At least one Tishana can go. And one more. Suppose we could cut one Panharmonicon since we did bring in quite a few non-creature spells. Alright, this hand looks okay. Got our signboard removal spells and some mana creatures. So just have to draw into our draw effects and then we should be okay. So let's run out of farmland. Alright, put on with a double ram creature start. And there's the Sarkons and Ceiling. Would love an untapped land here. Since then we can Exxon's Binding it. Alright, it's going to be an Elfish or Juvenator instead, sadly. Could also use our Fairgrounds Warden to go after one of the mana creatures. To prevent them from casting something that triggers the Sarkons and Ceiling. By playing Rejuvenator we guarantee that we can play the Binding next turn at least. So that has some upside going for it. By playing the Fairgrounds Warden, we also incentivize our opponent to kill the Fairgrounds Warden as opposed to the Vitalist, so we still guarantee Ixalan's Binding next turn in a way, and we might slow the opponent down. So I think we actually go for the Warden here, since we have plenty of creature removal left, and get rid of the Drover the Mighty here. And hope that they won't be able to trigger the Unsealing next turn, and then we can get rid of it. Second Sarkons Unsealing would be pretty awkward given the Ixalan's Binding. It's gonna be another Lanor Elves in two. A Drover of the Mighty, so it's all mana creatures, no payoff card so far. That's good. So now we can Ixalan's Binding the Unsealing before anything bad happens. We're not in a terrible spot if we get to untap and they just play a large dinosaur. And it's gonna be a Register Alpha. So we will take six here, which is quite a bit. But they only have one card left in hand. And we've got the seal away as an answer. So yeah, failing to hit our land drops was a little awkward. So how bad is it if we just play Rejuvenator, we find a land, next turn we'll have access to at least five mana, so we can Warden plus Seal Away to catch us back up, hopefully. I think that's the plan. It's gonna hurt this turn, but we can Shumblock with Rejuvenator just fine. Oof, and we missed with the Rejuvenator, well, that's the absolute worst case scenario. And we weren't gonna draw a land in five turns, so I guess... We're sort of happy that we got rid of those cards, but on the other hand, now we're pretty far behind since we might not be able to double spell. And there's a Demanding Dragon. I suppose we save ourselves more damage by sacking instead of chomping the Regisaur. Now we're definitely in trouble. We absolutely need to find an untapped land here, so we can answer the Dragon and the Regisaur, and then we're still taking six from those other creatures, so we might just be dead. Angel of Invention's not gonna save us, so we can ward on the dragon. I think that's kind of a forced play here. So let's say we did find a land and had access to seal away, then we could block with a Vitalist on a 3-3. Seal away the Regisaur and only take three down to one. Instead, now we have to triple Chump Block and then we die to the Demanding Dragon trigger. All right. So, do we want to reevaluate for game three? I think I was happy with our sideboarding for the most part. So, we'll uh, try again. Our opponent might be bringing in some more disenchant effects after seeing Exxon's Binding. And the uh, no lands theme continues. Well, I guess we'll keep a one lander. But we have to draw at least two lands here. And we don't have green mana, so our mana accelerants aren't good draws either. Alright, guess we're going to five. And this is probably the best one we've seen so far. Bottom the bugler. 
Well, for playing 25 lands, we aren't seeing many of them. Turn two Drover. We will probably need to find a Panharmonicon to make up for all the card disadvantage. Commune finds a forest. And the Lenor Elves. Alright, pick up a Naga Vitalist. I think we're attacking with the Servants, I'm fine with the trade. And then we can either play Vitalist or Bugler. I think I prefer Vitalist here since that unlocks our 5 drops. Don't wanna count on us drawing a land. So your opponent's got access to up to 6 mana. And it's gonna be a Demanding Dragon, which uh, will deal 5 to us sadly, since we can't afford to sacrifice one of our mana creatures. And a 5-5 five, five Flyer's pretty tricky for us to get past. So we did find a land regardless. Let's uh, draw some cards here. Alright, Exile's Binding's a good answer to the Dragon. So we're not doing terribly for a mulligan to 5, but if our opponent can add another big creature to the board here, we will be in trouble. I presume our opponent's playing Glorybringers as well, unless they're uh, testing a rotation-proof build. And it's going to be a fiery cannonade of all things. Okay, so that's going to clear all our creatures and the opponent's mana creatures, leaving the dragon in play. Don't think that's actually a bad thing for us, since we have the land and the Ixons binding. And a Steel Leaf Champion to follow up. Alright, that makes more sense. I guess we'll start by answering the Demanding Dragon. Even though it's more likely that they have the full four Steel Leaf Champions versus they might not have the full four copies of Demanding Dragon. I think we still go after the Dragon, just because Angel with two counters does trade for Steel Leaf. And Thrashing Brontodon can now free up the Demanding Dragon. That's another thing we should have considered, since now the Dragon's going to trigger again. Yep, so... Now we're in trouble. Down to two we go. And our opponent can just attack with the Demanding Dragon if we play Angel with two counters on it, and then we'll have to chump block it. And Scatter Groves is not going to help. Do we have any answers here? I think uh, the play is just play Angel, put two counters on it, and then hope our opponent attacks with both, so we can trade for a Steel Leaf, instead of having to Chum Block. But I think their best line here is just attacking with only the Demanding Dragon. And instead they just had a Banefire to burn us out. That also works. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, this hand does need a third land, but on the draw... We probably get there by turn 3, and the Rejuvenator will potentially also help us find blue mana. Turn 1 Fetid Pools, and there's a farmland. Alright, so we've got all the colors we need. So now we just have to try and line up our cards as well as possible. Our opponent on Grixis colors. Just gonna play Scatter Grove, say go. And then next turn play Rejuvenator, most likely. And we're okay if the Rejuvenator gets countered since we've got plenty of lands in hand already. But ramping up to 5 could be useful. Alright, that resolves, finds the Scatter Groves. And our opponent's gonna cycle a canyon. And Doomfall's gonna take a look at our hand, but we've got a lot of good cards, so it's not entirely clear what they should take, probably just Angel, given that they now give us a window to resolve it, instead they take the Bugler, since that's a uh, Clear two for one. Ooh, find another one, but I think we're still playing Angel here. More mana efficient. And uh, I think we're just making servos. Get in for two. So now our opponent's pretty far behind on board. And Magma Spray gets rid of the Angel. Fair enough. And Fatal Push gets rid of a token. And the Braid to get rid of the Rejuvenator. Well, opponent used uh, 
three removal spells there. All right, let's try to rebuild. Can play Bugler plus Servant. And do we go for Cloud Blazer or another Bugler? My guess is Cloud Blazer. And then we're fine playing the land here since we've got plenty of card draw incoming. All right, so far so good. Got a nice mix of spells in hand. And we're ahead on board. And Liliana Death's Majesty is going to plus, making a zombie. We're one point short of killing Liliana if we get rid of the zombie token here. Ooh, Panharmonican. So we can Panharmonican into Champion of Wits. Or Panharmonican into Fairgrounds Warden. So let's attack Liliana with our Bugler. Opponent's going to trump. And we'll play Panharmonican into... Champion of Wits here, see some fresh cards, and then keep two good ones. So which one of these do we discard? My guess is Fairgrounds Warden, but it might be Greedy. Let's say our opponent plays a Scarab God, then we're going to want it. Eh, we'll find answers if we draw four with Cloud Blazer. And I think we still draw two even though our hand's pretty stacked. And then we'll get rid of Servant and Angel. Opponent makes an extra zombie. Liliana at 7 loyalty. And her opponent did mill over a Scarab God. So they could reanimate that next turn. With Liliana and then still activate it right away. So that's the major concern here. Since a Scarab God can do quite a bit of damage. My guess is we just want to play the Angel. So we have better attacks and deal more damage to Liliana if they don't have removal. Or counter spells, we could deal at least 5 to Liliana, so they wouldn't be able to minus 3. I think that's the way to go here. And we might as well play a land in case of Supreme Will. Alright, so for the best. Let's see if they let us resolve the first Fabricate trigger. So we could go the all counter route, but our opponent could respond to the second Fabricate trigger by Lightning Striking or Braiding the uh, Angel of Invention. So I think we just go all servos here. And then attack Liliana with everyone. Since we don't want to deal with a Scarab God in play. And they're trading for Champion Wits. And the damage works. All right, Liliana down to two. That's good. And now Champion of Wits in the graveyard means we can uh, eternalize it next turn. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. So got game one against Grixis midrange. Bring in Exile's Binding. Bishop can go since they have too much removal. And we could consider some number of negates. Maybe we'll bring in like two negates. Shave a Naga Vitalist and a Rejuvenator. And this hand looks excellent. Nice mix of lands and spells. The Vitalist is likely to die. So we shouldn't count on it. But it would be nice to have it survive. Panharmonican, another nice addition. So if they do kill the Vitalists, then we do want to draw at least one more land here. Otherwise we could be in trouble. Alright, Servant to draw. But I think we still play Vitalist first. Most of the time I think you want to play the Vitalist first. Since if it does stick around, you're going to get more uses out of it, as opposed to only two from the Servant. And our opponent does pull the trigger on a Braid, which means we could either Servant or Bugler. Kind of liking the Bugler here. Make sure to resolve it in case of Essence Scatters, and that finds more Buglers or Rejuvenator. Kind of liking Rejuvenator here. As another nice value play that also improves our mana situation. And we did find a land, excellent. So let's attack. And now that we did find a land, I think I'm okay playing Panharmonican. Since if they do go land 5 into Scarab God, we've got the Ixalans Binding. And they decide to abraid. They might regret that, since abraid is an answer to Panharmonican. Alright, that resolved. So we've got the answer to Scarab God or Liliana, 
and if they just pass that's even better all right and even found land five so now we can go rejuvenator plus keep up negate and i think we play the land first all right that works all right so now we're pretty far ahead of mana and now i think we just want to keep up negate as long as possible And it's going to be Torrential, Gearhulk, end of turn. All right, it's too bad. Can't negate that one. But we can negate the Abrade, which seems worth it here. And then we get to play Cloudblazer and uh, draw a million cards. All right, those are good. Bugler, another nice three for one. And yep, I'll take a Cloud Blazer. And a Servant. Too bad we couldn't take the Shana there. And our opponent's just gonna pack it in, they can't handle all the card advantage. Sweet, so managed to beat the Grixis midrange. I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.